Welcome, friends. Today on Discipleship, we're going to learn the purpose for Gospel Grounded Discipleship. What's it all for? Stay tuned and find out. I'm Jeremy Marshall, Family Discipleship Minister at Brooks Avenue Church of Christ in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we're in the midst of unpacking discipleship, which is really just the biblical and historical way of making and shaping disciples of Christ. Discipleship is self-consciously grounded in the gospel of Christ, rooted in the local church, and led by Christ in the Spirit. So this week, we're going to finish up explaining what we mean by being grounded in the gospel. For review purposes, the gospel is the good news of Christ's incarnation, life, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension for us and for our salvation. Christ came to transfer his people out of Satan's kingdom of sin and darkness and hell and into his kingdom where sins are forgiven, death works backwards, and everything sad is coming untrue. And he paid for the kingdom and for our freedom from Satan and hell with his own blood on the cross. We enter this kingdom through faith in him alone. And by faith, listen, we mean a hearty trust that the Holy Spirit has worked in you as you hear the preaching of the gospel, that God will freely, by his grace alone, forgive all of your sins, that he will clothe you in Christ's perfect righteousness in this life, and in the life to come, he will raise you from the dead, immortal, imperishable, and incorruptible, solely on the basis of Christ's merit and Christ's work. Now, to be grounded in the gospel means that everything disciples of Jesus do, receive, and are comes to us solely by grace through faith in Christ alone. And this is the grace in which we stand, that in Christ we have everything we need for life and godliness, and that this grace is sufficient for our every weakness. It forgives all of our sins. It accepts us as righteous, and it will gather us to eternal life with Christ. So the rest of our time today, um, we'll be looking at what gospel-grounded discipleship is for. In other words, what purposes does it serve? Because the gospel isn't an end right in itself. It's the means God uses to redeem sinners and draw them into fellowship with him, and finally to conform us to Christ so that we would enjoy the fullness of joy and eternal delight with Jesus at the Father's right hand. So there's three things we get with gospel-grounded discipleship, and they're all from Ephesians chapter 2. First, gospel-grounded discipleship is for good works. Listen to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, and not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we're not saved by good works, but for good works. Did you catch that? Obedience is not faith, but faith produces obedience. Indeed, apart from saving faith in Christ, you are not able to obey God or do a single good work because without faith it is impossible to please God, Hebrews 11.6. But the gospel produces good works in believers first because God has made us new in Christ, has given us a new heart, placed his Holy Spirit in us so that we're fit to do good works, and he has planned good works for each one of us to do. And then we read in Philippians 2.13 that God is working in those who believe in Christ so that we have the want to and the power to carry out the good works he has prepared for us. 
The gospel produces truly good works, obedience born from faith, faith working through love. Second, gospel-grounded discipleship is for peace with God and peace of mind. Ephesians 2, 12, and 13 says that when we were without Christ, we were also without hope and without God in the world. Indeed, elsewhere in Scripture, it says we were God's enemies and hostile to his commandments. But now in Christ Jesus, Ephesians says, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Christ has given us peace with God by his blood. Just like the blood that Israel smeared on their doorways of Passover, and just like in God's covenant with Noah after the flood, God looks at us through the rainbow and turns away his anger. God looks at us through the lenses of Christ's blood. And instead of our sin and misery, he sees only the perfect righteousness and holiness of Christ, his beloved son. And so in Christ, we are made beloved sons and daughters with whom the Father is well pleased. Peace with God means peace of mind. I don't have to atone for anything. I don't need to be morally impressive. God doesn't need my good works, but my neighbor does. So because I have peace with God, I can turn my eyes to my neighbor who's in front of me, who actually can benefit from my good works, even unimpressive ones. When I am totally assured that I have peace with God, I am finally able to do what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to do good works and not let my left hand know what my right hand is doing. I'm going to be able to hide my good works even from myself because I don't need them to justify myself or to look impressive. Third, and finally, gospel-grounded discipleship is for peace with others. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18 says that Christ himself is our peace, who has made both one, in this case, Jews and Gentiles and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Listen, our vision at Brooks Avenue is to be a gospel-centered, multicultural, multi-generational church, and the gospel is the necessary ingredient that can make the multicultural and multi-generational aspects happen. We're looking together towards a future that God has promised where there will be an innumerable multitude of the redeemed from every nation, race, tribe, and tongue under heaven. Faith in the gospel gives us the hope and the love to lean into that vision because in the gospel we learn that all have sinned all are headed for hell. No nation, no race, no generation got the good genes that caused them to need Jesus less than the others do. So Ephesians goes on to say that through Christ, we have access by one spirit to the Father, no matter what our color or country of origin, males and females, Zoomers and boomers, every son of Adam and every daughter of Eve needs Jesus. And every believer in Christ has God for their father. And I don't get to choose my siblings. There's a lot of difficult conversations to be had around racial and generational and social issues. Those conversations are only going to be fruitful words, not fighting words, when we can all agree that Jesus is our peace. In him, listen, we can be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. What a witness that would be to a culture that's so quick to cancel something. And in the shadow of the cross, cast by the light of eternal glory, we can live with uncomfortable truths about ourselves and go on living. The world cannot give us peace like that. Gospel-grounded discipleship alone is going to give us good works that are animated by our neighbor's needs, not our need to look righteous. Peace with God, which brings peace of mind, and peace with our neighbor, who also stands in need of grace, and indeed in the church, stands in the very same grace that we do.